All right. This is Mehdi and Angelina. So today we're going to introduce some no-code and privacy-conscious alternatives to ChatGPT on your desktop. Hi, Mehdi. Hey, Angelina. Okay, so if you are a ChatGPT user, are you ever concerned about giving out your own data to OpenAI? Would you like to have something that's more privacy conscious? At least sometimes. Or do you want something to be more convenient to use, but without writing one single line of code? I guess that's a uh, very valid concern that everyone has in general. So yes, that's why I guess these open source models came into picture and then people would rather sometimes you use open source models because they can download and use them locally on their own computers instead of talking with cloud-based, for example, open AI. Yeah. And I also would like to try different models because I hear about Olama or Claude or so many other models, right? But ChatGPT doesn't mm -hmm. give you the option of using different models on its own platform. So let's show some different alternatives that we can use. Sure. So today's video, we are going to introduce some desktop applications where you can use to chat with different open source models. You can use them even to interact with chat GPT or cloud or other proprietary LLM models. But the point is usually when you want to have an open source model locally on your own computer, how to interact with them. There are a few tools and desktop applications where you can use to essentially interact with these open source models. Olama is very popular. So uh, you can download open source models from Olama and then interact with them. However, Olama doesn't have any native desktop application where you can open just like chat GPT where there is a UI so you can interact with the LLM. Olama doesn't provide that. There are some web-based UI and a few other tools where you have to essentially be a little bit of a technical person to install and use them. But if you need some desktop application like a native app for example now i am on mac so i want to just click on an icon and you know a desktop app opens and it can use it olama doesn't have any anything like that at least for now so there are some other uh, alternatives one of them uh, is lm studio it came out a while ago and it has become very popular you can download and install it on your system, depending on your operating system. And then you can, for example, it has a it has a GUI where you can open and then interact with it. You can download different open source models and chat with them. So it is essentially like a chat UI. So LM is pretty popular. It has been on the market for a while. But recently I found two interesting alternatives. So today I'm going to show you these two tools. One of them is called Chatbox. If you go to their website, they also have a GitHub repo where you can go. You can simply download the app and install it depending on your operating system. I have already installed that. So when you download and install it, you can simply click on the icon and this window pops up. So on the left-hand side, you can see like a nav bar where different icons and settings and menus are there. I have already downloaded an open source model, Google Gamma, using Olama. So you can see the icon up here where it means that Olama is running. Mm -hmm. And I have already set up Olama here. So you can choose different providers, even if you want to interact with OpenAI, ChatGPT, and other you know, uh, GPT-4, you can use that, or even in you know, a cloud, Azure, and other uh, providers. But the whole point of using these desktop applications is to use open source models locally. So I have selected Olama, and then in the model, 
drop down list, it shows the models that I have already downloaded on my computer. So you can see I have a few of them, but gamma, I'm going to choose that one. You can even change other settings like temperature, things like that. There are different even settings here that you can play with them. And now you can start interacting with the model. Okay. So this is now Google Gamma that I am using, essentially. Just you can chat with it just like chat GPT, but it's completely private on your computer. Can you show how you downloaded the model? Because I know you already downloaded it, but can you go to Olama and just show that how to download it? So then you download and install that. You can open your terminal and then you want to download Gamma, for instance. You just type in you know, an open terminal and say Olama run Gamma and it's going to download that on your computer. Okay, so you can do that for any model. Yeah, uh, I think you can probably just download it. If you scroll down, you can probably just download it. See, you can download here. Just click on download here so you don't have to run it in terminal. Just download it yeah, if, or show up. Yeah. Yeah, if you, yes, you can also do use this if you don't want to go that way. But the easiest way is just simply, right, just run this in terminal because it automatically put it inside the path so it is accessible through you know, Olama. Um, but we promise no code. So this count as code. Um, <laughs> yes. So pro no code means that it's not extremely technical, but as a computer I'm owner, just kidding. Right, you can simply <laughs> right, kidding. open the terminal yeah. and type a command. Yes. The idea here, as I mentioned, when there are too many different models out there that you want to try and you need some UI to interact with them, then you need some kind of application to easily do that. and. Yeah. There are a few out there, but I found this chat box very appealing. And the UI is pretty simple. Um, configurations are very easy. And then uh, they have already done a bunch of prompts for you, for, you know, for software developer, for social media influencer, I don't know, for Markdown. So the thing is when you just um, create any of these uh, co-pilots, there is a default prompt where you can change if you want to, right? Um, and if you want to create a new one, you click on this, my co-pilots. So you can see these are the default ones, but you can even create your own new co-pilot where you just define a, a prompt and then you start interacting with it. So I found this very interesting and easy to use. Other can we show that, one? It's... Can we show a use case for run, getting maybe formulas written for, let's find a yes. false function. Yes, so I, I have already tested that, but you want mathematical formulas. So what is the formula for Fourier transform? And then it write it in like mathematical form. So it's like easily readable mm -hmm. for the humans, right? Because it's using this LaTeX syntax. If you want to use the software developer, you can see this is the prompt. So it says you are an expert in software developers, so on and so forth. And then you can start asking questions. So you can have very special, specialized co-pilot by just changing the prompts. As I said, it's very easy to use. One question, how, how is this different from using ChatGPT other than like we're using Google Gamma model? And this is local and private. How about the so, computational experience? It is actually very similar. ChatGPT is just a UI interface and you can only use it to interact with OpenAI, GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. Here, you can use different models and see how they work in terms of accuracy and how they generate the responses. So this is good when you want to do it for models locally hosted. This is good for open source models. That's a big difference. How do you like the quality of the output, the responses? Is it on par with ChatGPT or close? Quality of the response depends on the model. Mm -hmm. But based on my own experience, because I have tried different open source models, these are just a few. I have deleted a bunch of others. Gamma, actually $2 billion parameter. <laughs> Sorry, it's 2 billion <laughs> parameters. Um, right. So gamma, that they were 2 so billion much parameters yes um is very good 
Okay. The quality of the output, especially for general conversation, uh, even for writing code and all that, is very good. So I really use it a lot, the schema. Um, so I'm a big fan of small language models. Instead of large language models, small language models. Because I can host them or use multiple ones, completely locally, private. So I can do different experimentations with them and all that. The speed is not bad, actually, right? Partially, it's not a big model anyway. The speed is actually very good. Who created you? Very nice. So you can see it's very fast. I like it. A few more questions. Can you chat with your local files using this? Because I know it's a feature of ChatGPT. They have, yes, they have actually like here some icons. So there is this attach image where you can click on and upload an image, but it needs a vision, right? Large language model plus vision model to be able to do that. I actually couldn't figure that out, although I also used Lava, which is a LLM plus vision model, but I couldn't actually upload and test it. Um, I have to just work a little bit on that. There is no um, other way to upload your CSV or text or PDF file and interact with it. So I assume that they don't support this right now. Right, right. It could be a pending feature they're building. So if they have that, it's pretty complete. Then it's all, all satisfy almost my basic it, Yes. I think if they do that, then it's going to be a full-fledged application where you can use. So this is actually very good. I like this one very well. There is another one. But before that, you go to uh, the next one, I think this may not be the best approach to actually test different models. So I think it does offer the options that for users to test different models for whatever they want to do. But if you're a developer building applications and trying to test out the performance of different models, We'll introduce other tools for that purpose in some future video. Yes. If you want to ask the same question and see the results coming from multiple LLMs, exactly. this is not the very best approach to do that. There are tools specifically for that, where you can just ask your question and see the output of different LLMs. This is just a UI where you can use different models and interact with them based on your needs. That's for this kind of stuff. Sounds good. Next one. The other, again, desktop application is this one called Jan or probably John. Probably John. So it's an open source alternative to ChatGPT that runs 100% offline on your computer. So they have also a GitHub and also a desktop app. I have already installed that one. Let me open that. This one, the UI is very similar to chat box. However, it is um, more limited in my opinion. It's very basic. It's very similar to chat GPT, but here you can use it to, you can use it for open source models. You can download open source models here that you can see they have a bunch of them. You click on download and when it's downloaded, you can start chatting with them. I, tested this one. It's okay. Basically very similar to the chat box, but it's just very simple. Just like chat GPT, where you have different like, conversations here. That's it. That's the only thing that it provides. It's very simple, very cool. However, I like chat box much better than this one, but this is also pretty popular. A lot of people are using it if you want to use open source models. This is another choice that you can make. This is more like a ChatGPT, more the base version of ChatGPT. Yes. But that's why the look and feel is very similar, but you can use it for open source models. Here, Chatbox, it. it's more, you know, it provides more feature. I like it right. better. Right. Awesome. Is this everything that we're introducing today? Yes, that's for this video. The whole point of this video was to introduce a couple of these desktop applications for people uh, right. if they want to interact with open source models. Yes. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. See you next time, Midi. Thank you.